Elon Musk's SpaceX, the aerospace company, is currently at its prime with the Falcon and Starship, but they never stop and will continue to do many things that no other organization in the space race could dream of. And recently, SpaceX's tycoon announced their plans to build its own space base on the moon. This revelation has shocked NASA along with Russia and China as SpaceX aims to establish its lunar outpost using a fleet of Starship HLS aircraft. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is a dream development. Recently, it completed its third test flight during which the spacecraft successfully took off and correctly separated from its first stage. Although the spacecraft and the booster that propelled it to orbital speed were lost, the mission achieved its goal and the engineers behind the feet managed to gather enough information to further improve it. In line with Elon's long-standing ideal, it's evident that SpaceX will continue pushing the boundaries of space exploration to new interplanetary heights. This was vividly demonstrated during Elon's discussion at Starbase, also broadcast on X, where he elaborated on the progress and milestones of Starship's program, promising to unveil new perspectives on the world's most unique rocket, including the introduction of a new moon base. We want to build a moon base, moon base Alpha. Um, and have a permanently uh, occupied uh, base on the moon. So, first to understand what Elon Musk has mentioned, let's take a look at how the design of the Starship rocket will land on the moon. Well, it's going to be a specialized ship for the moon, um, like this. <laughs> um, so the moon, obviously, there's no mechazella, so we need la landing legs. And uh, you don't need a heat shield, and uh, you don't need flaps, because there's no atmosphere. Indeed, the Starship HLS is a landing craft providing spacious crew cabins for astronauts and massive payload capabilities. With the current variant known as Starship V1, the payload's 100 tons. However, if Elon and SpaceX decide to build the HLS on the scale of Starship V3, that payload capacity goes up to over 200 tons. This would entail an increase in propellant tanks, although precise information on the scale of the increase is not available. Essentially, SpaceX would be able to load additional fuel into the lander. This decision could be an effort to enhance the efficiency of the Starship for lunar missions, which require significantly more delta V velocity change compared to flights to low Earth orbit. Additionally, the HLS Starship must stay in lunar orbit for up to 100 days while awaiting the crew. Larger propellant tanks would allow it to carry enough liquid methane and oxygen for landing, although some propellant loss occurs as it boils off into space during the flight. As SpaceX increasingly ramps up their launches in the future with improvements to the various versions of Starship, Starship's HLS will also inherit corresponding advantages and ensure even more excitement. With more flight tests, significant vehicle upgrades, and missions returning astronauts to the surface of the moon with NASA's Artemis program all coming soon, excitement will continue to be guaranteed with Starship, SpaceX tweeted, promising a surprise appearance for this variant. Alongside these upgrades, other basic designs of the Starship HLS seem to have remained unchanged or changed very little. The Starship HLS will never re-enter an atmosphere. Therefore, it doesn't need a heat shield or flight control services. This design choice reduces its mass and the number of tanker Starship launches needed for refueling. In contrast to earlier HLS designs with multiple stages, the entire spacecraft serves as both an ascent and descent stage. The Starship HLS features six Raptor engines mounted at the tail and can go up to nine with the Starship V3 variant, used for launch and most landing and ascent maneuvers. When approaching the lunar surface within 100 meters, this variant will employ high-thrust reaction control system thrusters located mid-body to avoid disturbing the lunar regolith with engine exhaust. These thrusters burn gaseous oxygen and methane instead of the liquid forms used by Raptors. Power supplied by huge solar panels encircling the vehicle. On the moon, there won't be a Mechazilla catching tower, so the Starship HLS naturally has to be equipped with an additional four landing legs to be able to land balanced on the lunar surface. Well, designing Starship HLS for moon landing is one thing, but Elon has shown the capabilities of the spacecraft go far beyond that. Starship will enable humanity to build a long-term base on the moon, and if Musk's words hold true, it'll resemble the Alpha Moon Base from space in 1999. Fictional Moon Base Alpha, located in the moon crater Plato and constructed of quarried rock and ores, Moon Base Alpha is 4 kilometers in diameter and extends up to 1 kilometer in areas below the lunar surface. The complex extends outward from the central main mission tower in a series of concentrically arranged curved structures connected by travel tube transit tunnels. Apart from the central tower, the surface building are two to three stories in height. 
Moonbase Alpha would become a vital node for SpaceX's space operations, serving as a starting and arrival point for lunar missions. Musk's plans obviously far exceed NASA's goal for a lunar starship. This isn't the first time Musk has expressed interest in establishing a base on the moon. Back in 21, Musk stated he wanted to establish a long-term residency on the moon. He stated, It's been almost half a century since humans were last on the moon. That's too long. We need to get back up there and have a permanent base on the moon. Again, like a big permanently occupied base on the moon. SpaceX's Starship Lunar Base is that of a horizontal Starship HLS placed on the lunar south pole, on top of the rim of the Shackleton Crater. The base will be covered by a 5-meter layer of regolith, the material covering most of the lunar surface, to protect the base from radiation and micrometeorite impacts. Only the airlocks and the nose hatch will be uncovered from the regolith. One of the airlocks will be transformed into an observation deck that will have a permanent view of the Earth over the lunar horizon. Expansion possibilities will be available through the nose hatch. The interior will have three levels that span the entire length of the vehicle, including the former methane and oxygen tanks. To accomplish this, SpaceX needs two variants of Starship. The first will be the basic variant of the HLS spacecraft. Upon landing on the moon and unloading the cargo, the cargo section can be detached from the tankage section of the HLS Starship using a mobile crane brought to the moon on an earlier flight. On the moon, the lunar crawler will deliver a large cargo section to a predetermined location at the facility. Here, the mobile crane will lower the cargo section horizontally onto the moon's surface, where it can either stand alone or be connected to other HLS cargo sections. Once in place, the cargo section will be covered with a lunar regolith to provide shielding from radiation and micrometeorites. After the Raptor engines are removed, the lower section of this HLS starship containing the fuel tanks is transported to Earth for reuse on future starships. Once the engines are detached, the HLS lower section is repurposed as a part of a storage tank farm for the facility. It's transported to a suitable location where it's either placed horizontally and covered with regolith for insulation from the sun or stays upright. If left upright, a canopy can be erected to shield the tankage from direct sunlight, reducing the boil off of cryogenic liquid stored inside. The lower gravity of the moon makes such construction and manipulation easier compared to Earth. This ensures surplus lunar starships are utilized productively to create habitats, lunar farms, or other components of a successful infrastructure. The second variant of the one-way lunar starship is based on the tanker variant designed to refuel depots in Earth orbit. Lunar facilities will require a substantial mass of volatiles to support their operations, particularly for agriculture and industrial activities. The essential volatiles needed include hydrogen, methane, nitrogen, and water. Hydrogen serves as fuel or can be combined with oxygen generated from lunar regolith to produce water. Methane is used as fuel for starships returning back to Earth. Nitrogen is crucial for lunar agriculture and has various industrial applications. If there's no nearby water source on the moon, water can be transported by these tanker starships to support lunar development. Upon reaching the moon, the tanker starship and its volatile payload are integrated into the tank farm of lunar facilities. The starship's Raptor engines and any unnecessary flight control systems are removed for eventual return to Earth and use on future missions. In general, establishing a long-term base on the moon is a wise move for SpaceX. This not only brings benefits to boost the commercial economy on the moon for the whole world, but also serves as a stepping stone for SpaceX to leverage in efficiently building on Mars. Humanity should have a moon base, cities on Mars, and be out there among the stars, Elon Musk said. Launching, failing, and launching. This has been part of SpaceX's rocket development throughout history. That's why the explosions with Starship will never be a challenge for them. In fact, they even rely on this to drive the development of their rocket program. And Starship's HLS is no exception. SpaceX is actually accelerating its test of the new Starship HLS prototypes and its crew. Recently, for the first time, we've seen new tests and designs inside the lunar Starship conducted by both SpaceX and NASA. Until now, SpaceX and NASA Starship HLS program has always been something that has not revealed too much. We can see the color and shape of the spacecraft, but we don't know about the internal structure of the spacecraft or how it's designed to function appropriately and efficiently for humans. However, what follows will not disappoint you. It directly unveils the inside of the Starship HLS and how humans carry out lunar missions. In a video from Smarter Every Day, we can see he filmed a practical corner of astronauts at NASA's renowned Neural Buoyancy Laboratory. At this point, the video showed a model semicircular pattern, or to some extent, we can imagine it as half of the familiar ring. Yes, it accurately represents the human landing system, the Starship Lunar Lander. This image also closely resembles the graphics from the Space Engineer released in 2023, showing similarities in the design of the Starship HLS.
Returning to the actual imagery in the laboratory, we'll have a simulated airlock right below here, so the astronauts will step out of that airlock. They'll enter this small rectangular awning area up front, which is actually a representative of the elevator that'll take them down to the lunar surface. And then we'll step out onto a connecting pathway and descend to the lunar surface. Right at that moment, the astronauts will have to start up their EVA suits to operate on the surface. In addition to the fairly comprehensive Starship HLS model with parts to serve astronauts exploring the moon, NASA is also preparing rough, rugged platform models to create an area, a space that resembles that of the lunar surface for astronaut operational testing. Well, this is indeed an exciting discovery. Honestly, this is the first time we're discussing how an astronaut will land on the moon with Starship's HLS. I am so excited, wondering how SpaceX engineers are designing everything to fit in there and what the final outcome looks like. Even though they haven't revealed it yet, this is still a fantastic development showcasing the relentless effort of Starship combined with NASA for the mission to the return to the moon after over half a century for the United States. These model simulations act as a 3D space where astronauts can familiarize themselves with the lunar lander in the lunar environment or perform operations similar to an actual moon landing which could be much larger in scale than what Neil and Buzz accomplished on the moon. Not only that, regarding the development of the lunar variant of Starship, SpaceX has achieved many milestones prior to this. The latest we have to mention is the victory in the third Starship launch. SpaceX has completed what the company calls a propellant transfer demonstration, something that's never been done before in a microgravity environment. According to a December email from NASA explaining the test, the goal was to transfer 10 tons of liquid oxygen on the Starship vehicle from one tank to another. This is a stepping stone for Starship refueling to be able to perform in-space refueling capabilities for spacecraft, especially crucial for the mission of Starship's HLS. To undertake the 1.4 million mile journey to the moon, Starship will need to fully load its tanks. Although a SpaceX representative stated that they'd need to review flight data to determine their success in fuel transportation, just by completing the mission, SpaceX will have gained insights regardless of how events unfold, enabling them to upgrade their prototypes. Of course, we all aim for the most positive outcomes, which is success. Furthermore, about a month ago, SpaceX and NASA successfully conducted a 10-day trial of the new Starship HLS assembly system. They executed over 200 different assembly scenarios at various speeds and angles. The results from this comprehensive testing process will be integrated into the existing computer models of the system, which will then inform future testing and design. During this round of tests, NASA and SpaceX demonstrated the soft capture procedure. In passive capture, the chaser extends its soft capture system, SCS, while the target spacecraft system remains retracted. The chaser does all the work, employing latches and other mechanisms to grab the target spacecraft and complete the docking. HLS requirements state that there must be redundancy in crew egress-ingress. The soft capture procedure seems to address this if the docking system works while one docking system remains retracted. In addition to these achievements, SpaceX has also conducted astronaut testing for the elevator of the Starship HLS. The elevator will transport equipment and crew between the living area of the Starship, located near the top of the lunar tower, and the lunar surface as they step outside for moonwalks. The testing allowed astronauts to interact with the elevator system's flight-like design, serving both as a demonstration of hardware functionality and providing valuable feedback from the crew's perspective. Constructed at SpaceX's facility in Hawthorne, California, the elevator model features a full-size basket with operational mechanical clusters and crew interfaces for testing. During the demonstration, NASA astronauts wore spacesuits simulating the size and mobility constraints that the crew will be facing on the moon. The test provided feedback on elevator controls such as gate locks, deployment interface for accessing and exiting the elevator basket, available space for cargo, and activities during basket movement along the vertical rail system. Besides the elevator testing, we cannot overlook an important experiment with the engines of the lunar variant of Starship. In August 2023, SpaceX demonstrated the optimized vacuum performance of the Raptor engine through a successful test confirming that the engine could start in extremely cold conditions due to prolonged exposure to space. One challenge that distinguishes Artemis missions from missions in low Earth orbit is that the lunar lander can sit in space without firing for an extended period, causing the hardware temperature to drop lower than what it would experience in shorter low Earth orbit missions. This mission brought significant success to Starship for such a complex component as the Raptor engine. If these tests alone may have left you somewhat skeptical about the stable development of Starship's HLS, in reality, SpaceX has already surprised us 
by having an integrated HLS model with life support systems. Since August 2023, a notable development has occurred. The emergence of specially designed white cone-shaped noses that experts believe represent the cabin model of the HLS Starship variant reserved for meticulous testing. What sets them apart from others is that they include rectangular doors along with intricate systems of wire, tubing, and complex control panels. This clearly demonstrates life support components, indicating rapid progress in critical testing protocols. Simultaneously, the company is navigating a phase of transformative design modifications for this monumental lunar lander, aiming to forge an optimal and finely tuned product tailored precisely to the mission's demands. Let's delve deeper into the evolution of these design models. Firstly, there are three significant alterations noticeable in the rocket's configuration. The foremost change is the deployment of solar panels from base position atop the rocket. During flight, these panels expand, mimicking the deployment method typical of most spacecraft. Once landed on the moon, they seamlessly retract, aligning flush with the lander's side. The second conspicuous modification pertains to the landing legs, markedly smaller and seemingly fixed in place compared to the original design, which suggested larger, potentially retractable legs. This revised approach hints at a possible reduction in weight by negating the need for leg retraction to the body. Lastly, SpaceX has strategically relocated the thrusters, situating them in multiple pods around the lander. These elevated landing thrusters are intended to minimize surface disturbance during lunar touchdown, mitigating the risks of debris and large rocks being propelled in the immediate landing vicinity. Overall, just in 2023 and the beginning of 2024, SpaceX has undergone numerous changes regarding the Starship variant. These strides underscore the calculated and impeccably executed nature of SpaceX's ambitious endeavors, surpassing even the most optimistic projections. At this juncture, is there anyone casting doubts on SpaceX's readiness to achieve lunar landings before 2030? Does any skepticism persist regarding SpaceX's technical prowess and capabilities? These comprehensive advancements stand as a testament to the resounding affirmative response dispelling any lingering uncertainties about SpaceX's capacity to fulfill these ambitious lunar missions. Currently, SpaceX is busy preparing for the fourth launch of Starship. Unlike previous launches, this time with the speed and lessons learned by SpaceX from the explosions, it will lead to an increase in their speed and quality of work. This also means that the time for the fourth launch will be significantly shortened. As SpaceX's pure Starship program thrives, there's no reason for the Starship HLS program to lag behind. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.